Hey, I'm Dr. Peter Selby, and I'm the Chief of Medicine and Psychiatry and a clinician scientist here at CAMH, a professor of the Department of Family and Community Medicine at the University of Toronto, and I'm cross-appointed in psychiatry and the Dalalana School of Public Health. My main area of focus is obviously uh, the addiction to tobacco and what we can do to help people quit. To that end, vaping devices have come onto the market, and, and we get sort of people who are using it to vape uh, nicotine, but they're also sometimes using it to vape cannabis or cannabis oils, which is very dangerous and nobody should be doing that. Um, and of course now with uh, the vaping and, and, and vaping of nicotine being available in the media and the concentration of nicotine being relatively high in uh, vaping devices, especially closed system pod-like devices, uh, people are coming and to quit quit vaping. They're, they're worried that they can't stop and find themselves addicted uh, in the sense that they, if they try to stop, they feel some withdrawal symptoms. So one thing is to understand that nicotine withdrawal for most people can be relatively mild and it lasts up to seven days. Uh, the, the really you know difficult parts where you people get irritable, cranky, angry, can't pay attention, feel, feel like they're restless, um, have difficulty falling asleep, uh, have ex increased hunger. Uh, but that usually gets, you know, worse. The worst part is two days. And if you can make it through those two days and comfort yourself through that um, and make it out to seven days, the withdrawal, the physical withdrawal diminishes. What you have to really then sort of work through is the, uh, the habit part of the addiction, which is uh, you know, the, the reaching for the vaping device, etc. And one way we tell people to manage that part is to, is, to, is to not have any of those devices around and clearly, you know, not be around those devices till your brain gets used to conducting its daily activity without having uh, vaping as part of it. Uh, whether it's, you know, waking up in the morning, brushing your teeth, having coffee, a tea, breakfast, walking, boredom, uh, whatever, uh, even having a drink of alcohol, you're disconnecting vaping with those behaviors. And to consolidate that, you need to practice that for at least a month, if not longer, uh, to make sure that that becomes a learned behavior again so that you're no longer associating activities with vaping. And then after that, it's really committing not to use uh, and, and giving it up for good. Now, for some people, that's an easy walk and they can and walk away from it. But for others, they have great difficulty in uh, putting down nicotine. And, and, you know, we have no good studies of what would work. But uh, by and large, we work with behavioral treatments to start with. But for the withdrawal, uh, there are non-nicotine solutions that people can use. I mean, you know, we do talk about people managing nicotine withdrawal with making sure they drink lots of water, they have lots of sweet drinks around them for a short period of time, uh, not long because you don't want to gain the weight. Uh, and that does help manage nicotine withdrawal in the short term, knowing that it'll, it'll go by a week. Uh, you still have to do the behavioral uh, 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 interventions and the change to the behavior to be able to quit. Now for those who find it even hard that they can't go for more than a day or a week without vaping, even after trying to quit, and have tried a few times and nothing is sticking and every time they they quit they're going back to vaping faster then if you still are interested in quitting and and find that you need to quit then medications again uh, might be helpful we don't know how uh, these medications work for vaping we know they work really well for smoking and they attack nicotine so so you know common sense will tell us that they, they should work uh, and there are several ways in which we go about this with medication. Having said that, uh, you know, when people are vaping, they can also, uh, especially if they're vaping with nicotine, they can also start fading by reducing the concentration of, of nicotine in their vape product. And so going down to the next lower amount and making sure that they keep track of the number of puffs they take uh, and the number of pods they're finishing, for example, if you're using a pod-based system uh, per day, and are you able to make it last longer and longer, and are you able to have longer and longer periods between vaping sessions? So that's another way of doing it, by tapering it over weeks uh, down to zero, so that you come down to the zero strength non-nicotine-containing uh, uh, vaping liquid, and, uh, and then put that down. 
Um, but again, that's another way people have, have reported to us of how they've done it. And then lastly, as I said, with the medication, um, medication that are used for smoking cessation may, can also be used for this. But again, uh, you know, that needs to be done on the advice of a pharmacist or, or, or a doctor if you're using prescription uh, or a nurse practitioner if you're using a prescription format. Uh, for the over-the-counter products like nicotine replacement, um, you know, given the concentration of nicotine in the uh, vaping juice, vaping liquids are not 100% accurate. We don't know for sure, especially in open systems where people are buying uh, vaping juice from stores. Uh, what's on the label may not be what you're getting. So, uh, and it's tough to do a calculation as to how much that translates into a patch. So what we do is, and what I do is, I will ask the person to switch over to something that is short acting like a gum or an inhaler or a lozenge or a mouth spray uh, to see how many doses that person needs uh, per day for the next sort of four to five days and how much of that is helping them stop vaping altogether. Once I know how much they need, if they're needing you know, 10 to 12 uh, doses per day, then I am more comfortable giving a full strength patch to that person. But uh, if they need less, I mean, you know, if they may consider a, a lower dose patch for that person or may just continue with something like this for eight to 12 weeks and get them to completely give up their vaping device and move over to, to this. And the last bit of advice, which is really critical, if this person has tried many times to quit tobacco products, combustible tobacco products, has tried the medications on the market and has found that vaping by itself is helping them stay off cigarettes, then you know you should really explore what the purpose of coming off the vaping device is. And if they're coming off it, make sure that they don't relapse back to combustible cigarettes because the harm from that is way more than any harm that can come from a vaping device. So I would, I would do that. And in summary, say you need to tailor uh, your intervention to people who want to quit vaping because we don't have any really good randomized control trial studies to show which is the best way to quit vaping and for whom, and in fact, who should quit vaping and who probably, and who shouldn't quit vaping.